Hey, Realty fam, this is Brandon, your trusted realtor, and I'm coming to you with part two of this interview. Very powerful segment, and you see the first part was hugely informative about the dynamics of a part of Washington, D.C. that brought in a host of economic opportunity. We'll continue the rest of the discussion about Fletcher Johnson. Let's dive into it. Yeah, there's a liquor store up the street from my house off of, what is that, Southern Avenue, and that just pick a day. Pick, just pick a day of the week and you, you'll have enough. Let's not call it trash. Just say arts and craft supplies. That's just a whole lot that is just distributed throughout the area. And it's just like the last thing we need, you know, I can go and get. My, my complaint is, is, is don't just add a liquor store. Give me a nice quality liquor store. Can I get a like Chateau Saint Michel? Can I get a very nice Bordeaux? Can I get something that is important? Can I get a Shiraz? Can I get a Veloponosa? Can I get something of a variety? I would prefer not. I mean, at least that. a Moscato. <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> Four people heard that Moscato word. They thought they was getting that fine wine for the longest. But no, I, I hear you. <laughs> well, you say Moscato, I say diabetes in a cup. <laughs> the Kool Aid of wine. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> On the post points. <laughs> Um, no, but seriously, like I, but I just I don't see it with twenty thousand square feet, and I feel like saying that you're only going to provide us twenty thousand square feet. I feel like that is a direct. Uh, it's like a slap in the face, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's slightly you know, yeah, it's inconsistent with what kind of the needs are of the community because the area War Seven is not densely populated from the standpoint of people on top of people, so we're not like a U Street corridor or something to that effect. Um, and so there is ample space, lot sizes are nice. So more people and more places for people to live is, I don't think it's necessarily the answer, um, but definitely being able to have those various accoutrements for life purposes is, uh, I think probably a better opportunity. So yeah, with yeah. that understanding, what can people do? Like as it relates to Fletcher Johnson, if someone's listening to this and they say, hey, I want to get involved with Fletcher Johnson, what is what are the opportunities that exist for them to do that? Well, you know, there are so many different things we can do. We're very thankful that we have our council member on our side. He understands our concerns, mm -hmm. right? And also Dimpad is listening to. Dimpad knows that, you know, we aren't happy with the limited amount of retail space. But what we continually need for our people to do, our people in War 7, our people here in Marshall Heights, is be involved and be active and be loud. We need people to go to our performance hearing, the performance hearings that take place at DC Council. We when need are, people. When are the performance hearings? So, so and what the, is a performance hearing? Sure. Um, a performance hearing is a chance for um, D for DC Council to look at all of the executive branch, you know, agencies such as like DEMPED or DGS, mm -hmm. and to kind of look at a year in review, like what did they do this year? And it allows the community to come in and say, well, this is how I felt about the performance of DEMPED this year. This is how I felt about, it's like a teacher parent conference, honestly, for like the community, like, you know, you act like oh, the, the community the agency to air out their grievances. Yeah, yeah. You know that the agency is like your child. Like so, Dimpet is like my first, my first son, and then DGS is like my my youngest daughter. You know, you just go and you listen. You let the you let them the the administrator or their agency head talk about the performance and what they feel like they've done well and what they want to improve on in the next year. Mm -hmm. And then you know, you as the parent, you kind of just come and say, hey, like. I know that it was some struggles and this didn't happen the way we wanted it to happen. You know, we recognize the good work that you did, but this is the things that we really want you to focus on. And this is how we want you to improve. Okay. So that's essentially what a performance hearing is. So it's, a, it's an opportunity for the community to be actively engaged and hear their viewpoints and their voices and those to be taken seriously. And I assume that yes. at the performance meeting, uh, where does that information get rolled up to? So like to ensure that action is taken. So who is so, the response? The fact that the D.C. Council is is pretty much hosting these performance hearings, mm. um, whomever is the particular chairman or chairwoman of that particular committee that is conducting the performance hearing, 
they're hearing it, right? So they get to hear the concerns from the community. And then when that particular agency is presenting their budget, which always happens a few months after a performance hearing, now they're aware of the things that they want to make sure are in place in that agency's budget. Um, Are they aware of the concerns that are taking place? So they can ask those questions on behalf of you as the resident. They'll say, hey, we had a great showing from War 7 residents, Marshall Heights residents about Fletcher Johnson and about their concerns about this land disposition agreement. You know, before you guys move forward with the land disposition agreement, we want to make sure that you address the community concerns. So it's just a way to make sure that our council members are aware of um, our concerns. And when are those performance meetings held? So we did miss the two already that took place. So um, in the regular world, like most performance hearings, if it was pre-COVID, right, um, most performance hearing happens like late January, February, maybe even the beginning part of March. Um, And then budget hearings, they tend to take place late March, April, and early May. Mm -hmm. Um, The DIMPAD's performance hearing was like February, I think, I think it's like 12, I can't remember. But I do know that DGS performance hearing is taking place on March 8th. And, you know, we have we have some templates. DGS. The is- Department, the Department of General Services. Yeah. OK. And, and like DGS, their purview is essentially like the Cliff Notes version we've been doing is, you know, they, they take care of government properties. They, they make sure it's properly maintained and stuff like that. So in the case for Fletcher Johnson, making sure like the doors are boarded up, the windows aren't looking like they're just broken and then making sure it doesn't look like a dilapidated building, the lights on the field are turned on, um, that if there are any unhoused or some people say still say homeless families there, that, you know, DGS is actively working with other agencies like DHS, Department of Health Services, to help find those unhoused families, you know, secure shelter and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and that is coming up when? That's March 8th. So um, it's real easy to sign up and um, you guys can always email us at the FJ task force at gmail.com and we'll walk you through the process. Um, But you just got to email the committee director and tell them that you want to testify. And if testifying ain't your thing, you know, some people don't like to talk and I I understand that I'm shy too. Um, you can always just send in a written testimony seven days uh, within seven days from the conclusion of that performance hearing. Seven days of the conclusion. Okay, I was going to say they don't really have seven days right now to send it in in advance of. So okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like seriously, but email us like you want to get involved. Like the Fletcher Johnson Task Force has been working for the last two years to really try to raise the concerns of the community and we have ways that you can be involved we have four excellent committees that we're trying to get people to like help us with we have a local and residential we have a local residence and fletcher johnson alumni community that's working on planning activities like we're going to do a cleanup at fletcher johnson we're going to try to do another reunion for fletcher johnson alums on the field you know we're going to just continue to raise the narrows we're trying to bring market seven out to do like a flea market there in the parking lot like so we need people to be able to plan and get these things done you know for us and then also um we have a communication committee where we work on those templates to submit testimonies we have a government of governmental affairs committee where we work with like dimped and dgs to really like talk to them one-on-one directly and we even have an external committee where we're working with um businesses in the area, um, other developers, the current developer, just to try to make sure that we can truly get the things that we, we would like to see at the Fletcher Johnson site. That's awesome. Well, it sounds like obviously to develop 15 acres is not going to be something that happens overnight. What's the time frame on some type on a development of, development of this scale? Well, so when the developers came, when George Gray Cardona Partners came to the community, they mentioned that they would love to groundbreak. Um, I think they said summer of 2023. Okay. Okay. So and, uh, still a, some time to work through things, but what is the real timeline that's available for community input or for consideration of community input at this point? Man, I would tell you yesteryear, right? <laughs> Honestly. So, you know, our philosophy is that um, community engagement is an ongoing process. So even until, until that last like stud is, is hammered, 
down, um, we think community engagement is key. But, you know, realistically, we want to make sure that we are working with DEMPED and letting the voices know um, before the LDA is signed. Since the award was transferred over December 2020, a typical LDA can take anywhere from three to nine months. So, you know, by that judgment, you know, we should be meeting with DEMPED and with the developer, you know, monthly up until, I guess, um, June, July. Um, to ensure that we we're heard and that those some changes can take place. So if someone wanted to get involved, so it sounds like they can reach out to the Fletcher Johnson Task Force, and I'll make sure I include that email address here in the description, but can they also reach out to their designated ANC commissioner? Yes, 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 they can. Um, yo, like, you know, War 7 came together in 2018, to like write this letter to our council members saying exactly what we want at the Fletcher Johnson site and really asking if the site can be moved from the deputy mayor of education portfolio into DEM, in DEMPED, the deputy mayor for planning and economic development. And in that letter, every ANC um, chair signed on to it saying like, we believe this is right, this is what we should be doing. So the task force does a really great job of making sure that there's representation um, throughout the ward on the, on, on the task force. So by just reaching out to um, a commissioner somewhere else, you will easily be able to um, also get plugged into and also get your commissioner um, to be plugged in. I know that there's been some elections and there's been some changeover and, and we're definitely making sure we're reaching out to those newer commissioners, but everybody know how to get in contact with us. Perfect. And I'll also make sure I'll include a link in the description for anyone who has questions or they want to, they live in Ward 7 and they want to figure out who their ANC commissioner is so they can send them an email directly. Awesome. So before we wrap up, because I feel like folks have a lot of information to digest, and I think the biggest call or biggest action or takeaway anyone can take from this is to take action and to get involved in your community, because it really is on the ground level where we begin to see from a historical standpoint with an institution like Fletcher Johnson, having that development really changed and created a huge opportunity, not only for the kids that lived in the area and the surrounding area, but the it created a unifying force for the community. And so one can only, can only think that the, the spirit of the ancestors are still on that land. And no matter matter what it is transformed into in the future will serve as a beacon to unify our war. The question is, are we in a place and are we prepared to fight the good fight to make sure that the war and the community receives those benefits? So there's definitely a call to action. And so thank you so much, Keith, for taking the time today to spend a little bit of that, that with me and to talk to the folks out there about a huge 15 acre development um, not quite a dog park, which I, which <laughs> dogs I need, but amazing opportunity for everyone who's going to benefit um, or as who is a part of this ward and will benefit from it. But you know what? Like, if y'all want to see a dog park there, like this is part of the community engagement part. Y'all want to have a little area dedicated where some dogs can, you know, you know, friendly engage and we can build community because at dog parks, you build community. You meet your neighbors and stuff like that come to our meetings, let us know. We just need to know what we should be advocating for. We have we have some great ideas, but bring that up. Let's figure it out. Let's talk to the developer about it. Let's see what's possible. Listen, I am not shy of an opinion. So I <laughs> consider me in. I would love a place to put these hounds for a while. Yeah. Well, Brandon, all this work you've been doing too in Ward 7 and like the way that you've been really trying to work in the area with um, in 7E, like that's been amazing too, just to see that. Like just to see like people, I know you're not from here, I'm not from here, but like your dedication though too has just been amazing. And I think that's that's how you really get that true transformation for a community. That's how you start to, to show that you care about the neighborhood. And then when you show you care about the neighborhood, other people invest. And whether that's economic investments or are just the cleanliness of the neighborhood, but it just, it all helps. So brother, I, I just, I love working with you, man. I appreciate Glad that. Glad that we met. Thank you for those kind of words. All right, folks. Well, if you haven't done so already, make sure you email the Fletcher Johnson Task Force. Whether you live in Ward 7 or any other ward in D.C., the name of the game is staying aware and staying active and staying involved because it's not just 
your city or my city. It is our city. And together we are that much stronger. So make sure if you haven't done so already, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that notification button. And I'm Brandon, your trusted realtor. And I look forward to being your source and your resource for all your real estate needs. Take care and I'll talk to you soon.